before the season started, I, there were a lot of questions about your offensive line. What have they shown you in their ability to run block that you've been able to, to lean on? No, I think, uh, you know, we've talked about it in here. We've kind of, from the very beginning, when we walked in in training camp, we made it the focus of, what we, of who we wanted to be and the way we wanted to play the game. And uh, they have taken that by the reins for sure. And our play style reflects that, the way they're, if they're firing off the football, the way they're finishing, um, all that stuff. That's, that, is, that was the, the number one thing we, we said we were going to do. We wanted our tape to look a certain way. And uh, those guys have definitely accepted that challenge and done, and done a really nice job. When did you first see that happen? I, I really can't pinpoint one particular time. I just think there's just been a really nice progression uh, through training camp. And then uh, as we got into the preseason, you know, it started, it started to come to life a little bit. And then, uh, you know, these guys have taken on the, the challenge. And it's not just them, to be totally honest with you. I mean, it's, it's the way, you know, our receivers, we're asking a lot of them to do the, a lot of dirty work. Uh, it's the quarterback. We put a ton on him to get us into the right play. It's not like we just call a play and run it. Uh, he handles a lot of things every single play. Um, so all, the, all of that goes into it, uh, into what we've been able to do so far. To EQ, what was most notable to you both in live action and then when you reviewed it on that play? Uh, no, I mean, I, I think it was what was cool, uh, you know, EQ's finish on the sideline, not just running out of bounds, cutting back and going to get an additional 15. Mooney on the backside, um, sprinting to be the lead blocker for his teammate. I think that all that stuff's like so cool to me. Um, um, you know, again, the selfless stuff that the the, uh, the offensive line has to do. Uh, Braxton did a great job of, of cutting the front side tackle. Uh, to, the guy kind of didn't even know we handed it off. Um, and so just a lot of really cool things that, that, uh, that, that were across the board. Luke, when a guy doesn't realize that the ball carrier has the ball, is that a, a, a function of all the different things you do out of that motion, in your opinion? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we do, we do a lot. We try to displace the defense as much as we, as much as we can. Uh, but then I think that had much, as much to do with Braxton consuming his attention as much as anything. Luke, what stands out about Khalil Herbert and the way both he works, but also the way he fits within this scheme, what you want to do? No, he's, I mean, like all that stuff I just talked about, right? He, he epitomizes all that, that stuff and, um, you know, just, you know, he, he, he maybe didn't have as many touches in the first couple weeks, and then now he comes and he's ready to rock and roll when he got the opportunity, he took advantage of it. and we, It wasn't like we blinked or thought anything else of it. We think we have a, a few special backs, and Khalil is, <coughs> is that. And so we're, he's one of our rocks, and uh, we're, we're lucky to have him. How about his, his vision, his vision, seeing landmarks? <coughs> Well, he has a cool patience about him. I think that's as much as anything. I think uh, Coach Walk does a great job with those guys, and you know, in uh, you know, t training their eyes where they're supposed to be. But uh, I think Khalil's got a really cool patience about him, that he's able to kind of let things happen and make it feel like he's not necessarily going full speed, but he is, uh, which then allows him to make cuts, you know, and, and, and read off the blocks of guys really well. But what was real, to me what stood out this game compared to the other ones was his ability to make the first defender miss whether it was a stiff arm, whether it was running through a tackle, or whether it was a make and miss move, I think that was, a real, that was the biggest improvement this week. So after Justin threw that second touchdown, NFL Films kind of captured you and Trevor talking to him on the sidelines, instilling some confidence in him, saying we still trust you. How do you read his body language in those moments to know that he is receptive to that or maybe needs that kind of a pep talk? Um, you know, I think it was just more about, you know, just the moment in the sense of like, hey, this is uh, – an opportunity to learn from this moment, you know, why that happened, the way that it happened, and how we can improve from it. That's all. We keep it real. We, we, we talk about what happened. Hey, this is why that happened. This is how we can avoid it so it doesn't happen again. Um, and, and, like, he's, he's, in, he's in that moment, right? He's basically a rookie, right, in the still, and he's going through these experiences for the first time and to then just think I made a really bad decision and then not really know why. I think it's important to make sure you're explaining to them, you know, why things happen. And so... Uh, um, I think that's just, you know, hopefully that's how we're all coaching uh, ac across the board here. And uh, that's just a, a learning moment that we want to take advantage of. On that first interception he had to commit, he said that the ball came out of his hand a little weird. And, and watching that back, just his mechanics, he looked like his body almost was, was off. Is that the proper assessment? And is that footwork? or is there so, so what happened on that one, sorry to cut you off. I didn't mean to do that. Um, he... You know, he actually used phenomenal footwork because it happened much faster than we anticipated. The nickel ran outside of, of, of Cole so fast. 
um, because of the bubble that was coming to him, that pole just, pole just popped. And so he actually did a great job of shutting his feet down. And, but it was, you know, just a little bit mechanically when he went to throw it, like you said. Um, he got a little bit long with his delivery, long with his stride. And so whenever it came out of his hand, you could tell it just came out funny because he – it was, a, it was actually a, a brilliant play by him. I mean, how he handled it and his decision-making, all that was great. Um, like you said, he just missed the throw. And so those ones, you know, that will happen every once in a while. Again, again, we can tighten up mechanically what we can do with him. But uh, how he handled that play, he actually handled it really well. We just got to make the throw. When you say that uh, Justin is like a rookie, basically, is he still having to earn your trust for you to be able to really open up the passing game? Oh, no, no, not at all. That uh, Open up the passing game. We do whatever we have to do to win games. Uh, so we've opened up the passing game. It's not like we haven't called pass plays that we were – or that we've been intimidated to call a play by any means. We're calling the game the way we feel is best to attack with our matchups. So it doesn't just – it's not uh, – you know, the, the perspective is that everything is just because it's through Justin. But we have ten other guys that we have to account for too. So – you know, sometimes we aren't able to go five wide and spread people out uh, because of, you know, matchups that we have to deal with. So that goes into a lot of things. So uh, as we go through the games, we just got to find a our way to uh, take advantage of the matchups that we feel really good about and kind of stay away from those matchups that we maybe, maybe we don't feel so good about. So three weeks in a way of trying to kind of ease him into this? No. no. What do you think has been like? When you look at he has the fewest pass attempts, starting quarterback in each of the first two weeks. That's not evidence of a lack of trust. No, no, not at all. We're, we, we do what we feel is best to help our team play a team football game, to help us win games. And uh, and I give a lot of credit to guys like him and those guys that are, I mean, receivers and Cole. Like, those guys got to do so much dirty work that maybe that they would love to be just running routes, catching balls. and things. But, like, we got to do what's best as far as across the board, how we can – uh, take advantage of matchups sometimes, and sometimes, you know, uh, you know. Hopefully, as we go along, it, it'll be it'll be different each week. And I think how we've kind of viewed it, it has been different each week. And maybe the from an outsider looking in, just looking at it, it doesn't appear that way. But it really has been. Uh, we really have approached each game plan much different. And um, like I said, we put a lot on those guys. Like Justin has so much that he has to handle uh, throughout the game plan, uh, and he does such an unbelievable job with it. it like it's been like a, like more of a crutch for me because of how much he can handle. Um, and uh, the receivers, the same thing. We ask him to do so many different splits and alignments and assignments, and they just been doing. A, they've been rock stars. So what are you seeing? Can you explain why on that third down, you guys ran the ball third and fourteen, a ten-yard run to Herbert, and then third and six. Next series, two-yard run to Everett. Yeah, the, the for sure, the other one was like third and 14, like you said, right? And there was, what, about a minute something left? It was because it was, it was, we, we turned it into a two-minute drive because we got there, we got to four, uh, third and one, right? Wasn't it second? Yeah, yeah. So because um, we, we actually got the first down, right, and we had a holding penalty, and it backed us up again even inside the 10-yard line. So now you're in a different type of mentality of – you know what's best. We anytime we put ourselves inside the ten yard line, our mindset is we got to try to get two first downs. Uh, so you kind of lost the two minute perspective of that drive. Uh, we got the first down eventually, um, but no, I think again, it's part of the whole team. It's part of the whole offense of like what's what gives us the best opportunity to go get a first down. Now it's not the sexiest thing in the world to run the ball on third and six, but when we feel like we have advantageous things that, that are. Uh, playing into our hands, we're going to do whatever it takes. So whether it's a, a run, a pass, a screen, whatever it is, we're going to do it. So um, that's, that's, you know, that's the way we, we put a lot of time into trying to find those matchups for ourselves, and that's part of it. When you write guard rotation, I mean, we saw Lucas snapping in practice last week, and it kind of felt like maybe he was trending towards going back to center, and then it, and he's still splitting reps with, with um, Tevin. Like, is that a matter of him still not being comfortable with the operation, or is there something you like in being – able to keep both of them at right guard? Uh, it's definitely not the operation part of it. Lucas Lucas is fine with that. I think it's like you said, uh, I mean, you're coming off of that type of injury. It, we we got to just keep building up. And when we feel really good about it, then we can then we can make a, a real decision of uh, are we going to move him to center full time or not. But right now, I don't think we're, we're to that point just yet of, of feeling that comfort. What are some specific things that you might be seeing from Darnell Mooney and or Justin Fields that that connection has not really produced so far this year? 
Uh, I mean, those two guys, I mean, they, they both work their tails off, right? And then we come on the practice field, and uh, they, they do a really nice job of, of creating that, what you're just talking about. And so we got to create more opportunities for those guys. I mean, Darnell's a big part of what we do, and if we're going to go where we want to go, he's got to be a part of it. I'm not – I know that. Uh, and so we got to do, you know, we got to do a better job of making sure they get their, their hands on the ball. And so uh, we'll, we'll find a few more of those, I think, as the season goes along. And once we find some comfort – uh, with other areas that uh, not just those two. Gotcha. More attention than than maybe he had in the past in, in terms of defenses from what you've seen on film from the previous years. Um, I think it's. I mean, it's always different when you're the you know the number one guy for sure. That's definitely a different perspective that a team's going to have about you than maybe if you weren't viewed as that before, before for sure. Luke, on, on Justin's 29-yard scramble on the first drive, yeah. he kind of explained to us yesterday that he hung on, on Darnell for a little while, and then by the time he came off him, his, his feet weren't really synced up to go elsewhere. Before you heard that explanation, what was your sort of assessment of that play? And then when you hear that, what is kind of your feedback to him? No, I mean, if, if the guy doesn't, you know, you know, it could have been called for illegal contact on Mooney. The guy cut Mooney off, and they ran into each other. And so... What you'd love to see him do is go all the way down to the to Pettis there on the check down, uh, but that's but that's who he is. Like when he has that moment to be able to create space and time, um, we definitely don't want to take that away from him. And so, uh, I wouldn't say he necessarily hung on to it too long. It's just that okay, once that collision happened, okay, find your check down, and then if that wasn't there, now now it's time to get out. So maybe just taking that that check down step and then go would be the the improvement from that play. What do you think about coaching? Justin, like you said, he's a young quarterback and you want to keep his confidence high, but you also want to be critical and make sure that he's correcting the things that he needs to correct. It. For you personally, what have you learned about that coaching style? Because you've, the quarterback that you've coached in the past had a lot more experience to know this is just one play where he had plenty of confidence, where Justin doesn't, maybe doesn't have all that yet. Not much different, just different way of going about it, honestly. I mean, that's coaching, in my opinion. That's what it's all about. That's why we do what we do. That's why we love what we do. And when we can help people progress and grow and there's a bunch of different ways to go through that but in the end you know your 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 end your end game goals are the same and how you treat it is the same in the sense of you know there's no sense in like I don't believe in just demoralizing people or anything like that we're going to be positive and we're going to we're going to communicate with each other we're going to talk about the whys and the hows and uh, we're not just going to just say move on and hey go make that play that just doesn't exist in our room the uh, right guard situation uh, Matt explain to us on on Monday that um, Tevin just didn't have the best practice last week on Wednesday mm -hmm. and went into Lucas starting and uh, getting the first reps. Can you give us a better idea, I guess, of what you're looking for in those Wednesday practices when things are a little bit more physical from Tevin? And then how was yesterday's practice for him? No, yesterday was yesterday was actually one of our best Wednesdays we've had uh, since we've been here. So that, 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 that part of it was, was plus. Uh, and it just goes into like coach talks about. I mean, you got to bring it every day, and so uh, those that do are gonna are gonna are gonna have opportunities. And I think coach just you know he believes in that, and that's you know we're all on board with that. Justin, Justin yeah, said yesterday. Do I got? Yeah. Uh, on the fifty-two yard run from Herbert, a couple of guys talked about splitting the defense. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, they're just talking about getting the defense to play a certain way. Right, and then you hold them to that line, and then you're able to crease it behind it. So we were able to stretch the defense. Um, um, you know, Sam did a great job of, of, of finishing his play and kind of turning and stopping and kind of creating that crease on the backside of it. So we had really good push, and that's that get off that we're talking about. We're selling it. We're, the, court, the running back did a great job of trying to capture the edge, and then whenever, whenever you get the defense to overplay it, then that's when you get to split them. Uh, Justin said yesterday he didn't feel like he was hesitating at all at, at any group. Do you see any hesitation from him maybe not pulling the trigger when guys are coming open? No, no, I don't at all. I really don't. Uh, like I said, that one, the first interception, that he, he actually had to speed up, and he did. He just missed the throw, honestly. So, uh, you know, we got to just make it that we don't miss those throws. That's all. What do you think of their wide receiver crew? Obviously, they lost one of their uh, better players in Sterling Shepard last week. How do you evaluate that group as a whole as you – you know, prepare to defend the passing game. Yep, they, they still have guys that may not have a, a long resume, but as you look at um, what they do have in terms of the depth chart, they have guys that can really run. Uh, they have guys that can, um, that are good with the ball in their hands. And uh, they have some guys that can stretch the defense. And then 
um, uh, one or two of the guys um, uh, that may not have been playing um, that are big and uh, you know catch the 50-50 balls that you know turn out to be not so 50-50, more like 70-30 and in their in their favor. So it, it's still a, a good group, uh, but the the engine that runs that team is the uh, is the running back. So. They are uh, beneficiaries of a, a really good run game in, in Saquon Barkley. When you watch Barkley, is there a, a play or a couple plays from this season that, that are indicators to you of where he's at in his just development? Yeah, um, full speed. In <laughs> uh, a couple of plays, yeah, it's uh, you look at it and um, it's uh, hammer the rock, hammer the rock, hammer the rock, and then big play. He finds a you know, a gap, someone that's peeking backside. It could be the nose or uh, it's uh, he's going outside and it may be the defensive end that's uh, that's peeking inside for whatever reason. He's on the edge and, you know, going for 30 or 40. So, um, yeah, he he is a he's a scary guy in terms of uh, his home run ability. What is special about him physically? I know he's been hurt the last couple of years. He looks kind of back to normal. Am I allowed to say thick in again? Yes, please. <laughs> no, he is... Um, you know, you know, big thighs. Uh, he is um, great contact balance. Um, he can hit home runs, so um, he can take it the distance. Uh, the one thing that I do see that maybe I'm not sure if I saw it um, years ago that um, they feed him the ball in the passing game also. So he can, uh, he's in uh, well improved there, um, and um, they try to bring pressure and he he blocks. So uh, he's a he's a complete back. Yeah. Special about given what he's able to do, and also their offensive line, the struggles that they've had. How do you defend knowing that they've maybe struggled on the offensive line, but they have a piece like Saquon Barkley who can do so many different things? You know, I um, I always give credit to coaches because uh, the one thing about the NFL is that what you may see in terms of deficiency one week that coaches, uh, good coaches, uh, solve problems and. So a, a lot of people may say, hey, they're deficient, and you saw maybe some sacks and you know that type of thing uh, early. Uh, but good coaches solve problems. And so uh, I try to tell our guys not to go into the ball game thinking that uh, what you saw the week before in terms of deficiencies that you'll see the, the next week. Uh, so I, I still think that overall um, that they'll, they'll, feed, they'll feed him the football and then when you bring an extra guy down in the box, they'll they'll try to get over top of the defense. And then if it's not there, they they check it down, and that's where they get some chunk yards where guys may not be fitting up the, the check down right, and they're getting extra yards. So um, I don't take a, a whole bunch of stock into uh, what happened last week uh, with uh, maybe some problems on the offensive line. Um, they they have good they have great coaches, not good coaches. Why was uh, Roquan so much more effective in this game than the previous ones? Um, I don't know if you'd say that much more, uh, maybe more productive in terms of the stat sheet. Okay. Y yeah, um, just um, uh, each week, uh, I think, feeling more comfortable uh, with, with the defense. And I think everyone's getting a little bit better. And you're uh, playing faster in terms of um, knowing what to expect, um, being comfortable. And, um, and Roquan's always been a good player. Um, so those plays that he's making, um, uh, I think that he's, you know, he's made them before. Um, just, just being more comfortable with, with playing, that's, that's all. Do you think this kind of opens the door for him? Kind of just seemed like he thought and, uh, and even Matt thought that, you know, this, now, now he's kind of ready to, to, to roll, I guess, or just after, after you know, not having <coughs> – played in the preseason and stuff like that, that now he's ready to go. Do you see it that way? Or, is, I mean, is that, is that? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I take each ball game uh, individually. I, I would hope so, that you'll keep seeing an improvement uh, week to week, um, really with the defense, uh, really with me being comfortable with uh, making calls with the guys and, and also them um, getting comfortable with me. I would, I would hope that, um, you know our our thing of improvement every week. That's that's everyone, uh, not just Roquan, but uh, the coaches, myself, um, and the players. Alan, Matt Eberflus said yesterday that uh, with the six sacks, like there's got to be more pressure coming from everywhere, not just the four down linemen. For for a scheme that notoriously doesn't blitz a whole ton, for you is that just a matter of 
I've got this litany of things that I don't typically go to, and you can tap into some of the packages that you want to. Like, is is, th is that a benefit for you, kind of knowing that? Um, yes, and I'd say yes and no, a little bit of both. Um, I, I would like to think that we have some things in our back pocket that we haven't shown that uh, that may come out at the proper time, and uh, and I don't know if there's such a thing as um, too many sacks or too many pressures. Um, there's just uh, there's no such thing. That's like a car too fast or too much money. Uh, it's you know you you can't have too much or too many. So um, yeah. So we always want uh, we always want more pressure. Do you have to change like do you change anything as far as like your philosophy when in like thinking about dialing up things that you tip you said you typically don't show? Like is there su is there a different approach for you when you're calling the defense that way? No, I, I'm I'm not necessarily making calls to get more sacks. We we do want more pressure. We just want to make sure that uh, at the end of the day, when we look at the that at the stat sheet, that um, the sacks are timely, which they were. We um, and that uh, on third down, we're we're getting off the football field. So that's the most important thing. And uh, when we each week we look at ourselves and scout ourselves, and we see, hey, what do we need to improve on? And if and if that's the case, we'll do some different things to maybe generate more pressure and more sacks. You guys have yet to allow a, a touchdown after halftime. What's your interpretation? Sorry. You have to allow a touchdown after halftime. Mm -hmm. What's your interpretation of that? I don't. You know, I, yeah, I, I don't really. Um, uh, I, I haven't really thought about that. Um, I would say that I would hope that it's a byproduct of how we practice uh, about mental toughness about the guy's attitude coming out uh, halftime. I hope that's a reflection of that, um, that we, uh, we preach stamina uh, mentally and physically. So I would hope that the way we, the process that we go through, that's a, uh, that's a byproduct. Along the lines of generating more pressure, what do you like about Travis Gibson at tackle as opposed to the end? Um, OK. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, we, we try to put guys anywhere that we think we can get a good matchup. So I do think the NFL is, is about matchups. And if we can generate pressure, um, get sacks, uh, and, and have them in that spot, um, I'm all for it. Uh, if, uh, if not, uh, no. And I know that's a, uh, you know, I don't want to think you think that's a, a get out answer, uh, but it just depends on how it helps the defense and helps the team. Robinson show you more when he did that earlier in the season. Um, you know, it's a that that spot is a little bit different animal. I know what the what we do is, um, if a guy is practicing well and if a guy is being productive in practice, uh, it's an honor to be on that rush team to that that group uh, on third down. You have to earn your spot in there, and so um, if you earn that spot, earn the right to rush. You know the the. Uh, we have four guys or five guys or six guys, and it's a rotation. And so guys are clamoring to get uh, on that third down rush team. So, um, you know, it, it's one of the four, and we mix up, you know, where guys go um, based on what the need is for, for that ball game. Yeah, you know, what do you think your defensive backfield did with Jalen out? Your corners particularly. Yeah. Um, I, I was, I'm proud of the group. Um, uh, I'm proud of, I, I think one of the guys talked about next man up, and uh, we had uh, maybe three rookies total out there that, that ball game. And uh, that says that, one, that the coaches are preparing the guys, um, two, that we're in the problem solving business, and three, a credit to the guys and how they prepare uh, for the week and uh, prepare when it's, uh, when they're the backup and then coming in and uh, in having to play. So uh, I am extremely proud of the guys. Yeah, now, that you've, now that you have three games on, on tape, uh, how, how important is it to be difficult to scout? You know, does that, is that part of the plan, or, or is it just like here's what, here's what we do, you know, try, try and beat us? I would hope that, well, first I would say that um, if you're good at what you do, you have tendencies. Uh, good teams have, have big-time tendencies. And I would hope that uh, when people look at us, they would say, hey, we kind of know what they're doing, uh, but they execute their stuff so well that we can't, we can't stop them, that they play at such a speed, at such a rate, at such a veracity uh, that they can't be stopped. So I'm more, um, more, that's more important to me than saying that 
gosh, they do everything. Uh, we want to do something well at the end of the day. We want to say that um, when people come and look at the, or they look at the tape, I want them to say, wow, did they speed the tape up? Is that the speed of you know the, the tape, or are, are they really playing that fast and that precise and that consistency? That Those are the words I, I want people to use, not just they do a lot of stuff. You said that you, you hadn't really thought about the success that you guys have had in the second half with not allowing a touchdown. Is, is that because it's too early for you to make conclusions about it, or is it just random that you guys have been better in the second half? No, I, I mean, I'm, I'm aware of it, uh, very aware of it, but it's a, it's a marathon. It's a long, long season. So um, I, I look at the stats and I look at where we're trending, um, but as of, as of right now, it's, it's still early. You'll see that uh, uh, historically, there are teams that are three and O, and but they're three and O like going this way. And you'll see some teams that uh, people have written off that are zero and three, but they're improving and they're doing this. So um, yeah, I, I've looked at it, but you know, still I, I know it's a the same song, the same dance that I, I come up here each week. Are we improving? That's that's what I want to see. Are we improving week to week? And then is our trend doing this? Uh, steadily in terms of how we are are getting better. Good afternoon, how are you guys doing? Good. How are you? Good. Doing outstanding. Ready to go to practice. What's the game plan with Bayless this uh, Sunday? Yeah, we'll see. We're hopeful that he plays. <laughs> and then we'll see this we'll see the game plan if he does play on Sunday. Well great question. <laughs> with, he he said that he had a setback with the hamstring, so when you're game planning to see if he's able to go. Is that something where you have to almost implement a pitch count for a guy like that just to make sure that he doesn't have a setback in a game if he can play? Yeah, I mean, that's something we'll talk about towards the uh, end of the week. We haven't really talked about that. We're just hopeful he's out there. We're just hopeful he plays. And our game plan, we usually tailor it to anybody who has a helmet on. So um, we don't change, like, a lot of different things. I mean, there are some special things for some special players, but um, we 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 go by hits principle, technique, and fundamentals, and we go play ball. So whoever is available, uh, we should be good to go. I just mean in the sense of like with him rolls on offense, rolls on special teams. Might there be like less of one as he's getting up to speed since he hasn't played? Like trying to like weigh that versus having him be able to use all of his skill sets on both sides. Yeah, no, I, I understand your question. We, we really haven't had that conversation. We'll have it later on in the week and see how he progresses when through you, practice. When, when you guys get the ball back there at the end and you obviously have some communication there, what's the process and procedure of the lines of communication to get the ball where Cairo wants it to take that last kick? Yeah, so that's something we talk about. Uh, that's a great question. Our uh, process with that, we actually start talking about that earlier, early in the fourth quarter. Um, because in the fourth quarter, you really realize, you know, which way you're going, which way the wind direction is, and we have that conversation early. And you try to have it really early um, because what you don't want to do is have it on that last drive and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, I did hear it, I didn't hear it, I thought you said this, I thought you said that. I thought Coach Flus and Gessie were phenomenal along with Harry, along with that. We talked about that way before we ever got down to it. And uh, – Justin did a phenomenal job putting the ball where Cairo wanted it, and uh, Cairo did the rest, and the rest is history. It's a big kick for him, big, big, big-time kick for him, a great job with the uh, protection all day. They did an outstanding job. I mean, he had a 50-yarder, he had a 47-yarder. You guys saw it. And then the game winner, so the O-linemen we met on field goal today, they were pretty – they're still pumped up. Uh, about that, that they had a role in that. So that was awesome. Luce did have to take a timeout. Justin was, was kneeling in the middle. He got a timeout right before that, and then you guys obviously shuffled two yards to the left and, and put it on the hash there. What, what was going on in that sequence there? Yeah, nothing really. Just We're just waiting for them when they call us on field goal, and uh, they knew what hash we wanted it on uh, for probably about eight minutes, nothing major. So you'd have to ask, like, uh, Fluce or offense if they saw something on that, on that uh, Part of it. What reassuring was it? Your velocity on, on touchback 
Max. And I, I asked that only because I think it was Tristan, it might have been the opening kickoff, Tristan Ebner's catches in the end zone, but right near the goal line, and he, and he, he takes, takes a knee right there. What, would you prefer him to run that out, or what is your philosophy on that? Yeah, I really uh, – it depends on who you're playing. Uh, so it's a week to week. It's kind of, it's kind of scheme related. The question you're asking in terms of philosophy, but um, anytime we get a chance where we think we have the advantage um, to return a ball, no matter where it's kicked, we're going to return it. If we don't think that it's the best thing for the football team, then we won't. So I hope that answers so your question. That's kind of premeditated, like your. Last week, for instance, you might be in his ear if you catch in the end zone. Let's let's take a knee. Oh sure, Based we on the game plan. Yeah, game. sure, we do hit charts and all of that stuff on how uh, far a guy kicks the ball, how much hang time he has with the ball. His job is to study the kickers. He has to report on that. Uh, the kickers also report on that uh, to let the specialist know. So um, it's part of their, I guess you would call it homework assignment, where they have to present and they have to talk about it. So we all talk. We talk about it probably two or three days in advance. So, Richard, yep. Uh, Cairo said that uh, Cairo had gone through like a little bit of a slump, if you could even call it that, <laughs> kind of like late preseason. And then that first game with the weather didn't really help. Have you seen him be a little sharper in practice the last couple of weeks? I see him the same as always. I, mean, I, didn't, I wouldn't call it a slump. I wouldn't call uh, his practices any different than they were uh, from training camp to off season. I think the kid, got put in a situation, or the man got put in a situation this week with those gusts of wind. I mean, they were up to anywhere between 15 to 20 miles an hour to kick a 50-yarder and 47 be the first one to kick a 50-yarder and then to make all his extra points and then to kick a game winner. I mean, that's what those guys live for. So I couldn't be happier with Cairo, with Scales. He snapped the perfect ball. Trent put it down perfectly. Um, and I just see a group that's – that's playing with good confidence right now, and I'm excited to see him kick again this week. Seems like the Texans were almost challenging you to return that game. You know, after that kickoff that Grody was talking about, they seemed to be kicking short of the end zone. Do you think that was more of a week-to-week -week thing like you were alluding to? Like, maybe this week the guys have the advantage over us, but next week we'll see if we can do a little bit better there? Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what their plan was coming into it. Uh, you had to ask them, but they sh they kick some deep, they kick some touchbacks, and they kick some short. So maybe the kicker mishit it, or maybe they planned to do it that way. Um, it turned out good for them on on a couple of those plays. So that was a nice job they did on one of those coverages. And then one of them, we felt like, hey, if we would have blocked one guy, it could have been could have been really really good for us. So we just we don't really know what they're what they were thinking, but. We know that they kick, you know, two in the in the end zone, and they kick two 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 short. So, Richard, are you concerned at all about the turf at MetLife Stadium? I know you were on that 49ers team that had some issues with it. There's been problems this year. Yeah, no, not really. I think the NFL, uh, obviously, they they test all of that stuff. So I'm confident in in all of that. I never really, I never really even think about it to be honest. Um, I'm just excited for our guys to go play on it. Should be a fast track, so should be should be really excited to play on it. I know the guys are; they're fired up to go to practice. So, in the uh, in the punt return game, have, have there been opportunities that maybe we don't see that have been there and they just haven't materialized, or it's just you guys are you know haven't been given those those opportunities yet? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I think uh, punt return. When you talk about punt return, you always have to look at the area of the field which you're returning the ball from, and then you have to look at if the returner has space or not. So. Sometimes he has space, sometimes he doesn't have space. If he doesn't have space, can he create his own space? So we're looking forward to having more opportunities for sure. How many Hikate didn't uh, lose that one of the Suns? Do you think that was maybe one that could I, I definitely think that was one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. On, the, on the fake punt they ran, yep. is there a situation where you get your defensive players out there and they're, they're standing there saying, well, since we're on the field, they're not going to run a fake? No, I don't think so. I think we're in defense. The defensive guys are out there. They're ready. They know it's a fake coming. Uh, I think they just they they got it. They executed it's fourth and what one fourth and inches. Tough to stop quarterback sneak, punt fake anything there can be stopped for sure. But we just didn't stop it there. You know. I mean, they had like some smaller guys blocking some of your D linemen though. Yeah, they just got unders. <laughs> that was all. <laughs> they just got unders. How irritating is that 
for a special teams coach when the trick fights up and they get you, like you said? Yeah, I mean, I'm not – I mean, it's football. Like, you, it's never perfect. It's uh, never going to be the way you want it all the time. Even when you score a touchdown, there's something to coach on it. So, uh, it's just football. That's all it is. Over the, over the course of a season, you might only see, like, two or three fakes even tried. I, I, as a special teams coordinator, like, what are you looking for? What do you – I mean, how much prep are you doing in, looking for that every single week for a play that doesn't always happen a lot? Yeah, we look at it every week. So you have a file of coordinators. That know, as long as they go back, they've been coaching 20 years. We got film that goes back to non-HD. So you're looking at all that stuff. So you look at it all the time. The players see it. We all see it. We all, I mean, there's more than, it's probably maybe, it just depends on the year. Like it's sometimes it's 10 fakes in a year. Sometimes it's 15. You got to look at all the different ones. So sometimes they're good to do, and then sometimes they don't. When you have fakes, people say, well, that was a great one because it worked. And then when it didn't work, oh, that was dumb. Why did they do that? Right? So it's just sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. Is the file on you? I'm sure, I'm sure somebody does. No, I definitely do. <laughs> I definitely do. <laughs>